Because of advances in technology, personal computers have replaced the supercomputers of the 1960s, bringing animation to the desktop. And of all the PCs available, the Amiga offers the fewest impediments to realizing your creative vision. From its inception, animation has been a critical component of the Amiga, and it remains the only personal computer whose operating system includes a powerful collection of animation routines. Nobody knows what magician first created the illusion of motion using a flipbook. It's a simple idea. Draw a series of pictures, slightly changing each succeeding picture. Put them all in a stack, flip through the pile fast enough, and voila, your picture has motion. The challenge is to make the object appear to move smoothly and realistically. Contemporary animators owe a debt to a visionary 19th century photographer named Edward Maybridge, who made a detailed study of the way people and animals move. Although the study predated the invention of moving pictures, his photographs illustrate movement so clearly that when run in series, they create the illusion of motion. Classical animation methods haven't changed much since then. Artists draw each picture by hand. The pictures, called cells, were recorded one frame at a time onto film. And as the film industry developed, so did animation. First talkies, and then color gave artists unprecedented freedom to indulge their imagination. And the audiences loved it. Animators, looking for another breakthrough, began using computers to create three-dimensional images. Images that looked real. Armed with this new technology, their animations could create both lifelike situations and wild fantasies. Like these animations from The Mind's Eye, a computer animation Odyssey video. Unfortunately, the computers that had enough power to create such complex detailed images were quite large and very expensive. Something's happening to drink boxes. In the last 10 years, computers have become more powerful, more compact, and more economical. As a result, computers are now being used throughout the animation industry. Paint programs are replacing the classical animator's paper and ink. Computer-generated 3D graphics are dressing up film and video productions. And video images are being used as elements within animations. Because of advances in technology, personal computers have replaced the supercomputers of the 1960s, bringing animation to the desktop. And of all the PCs available, the Amiga offers the fewest impediments to realizing your creative vision. From its inception, animation has been a critical component of the Amiga, and it remains the only personal computer whose operating system includes a powerful collection of animation routines. One of the most impressive demonstrations of the machine at its 1985 launch was RoboCity, a simple but effective display that used the Amiga's built-in animation routines. And the Boing Ball so captivated the imagination, it became the de facto logo for the Amiga computer. For years, the Boing Ball was emulated by other computer systems to show that they too could be used for animation. Aegis Animator was one of the first commercial software packages of any kind available for the Amiga. This program automated the classical two-dimensional animation technique called tweening. First, the animator draws starting and ending cells of emotion. In a classical studio, lesser artists called tweeners would draw the cells in between, dividing the change equally among them. This shape-changing process is called morphing. With Aegis Animator, the computer automatically creates the intervening cells. Once finished, the animation can be played back in real time, and viewable copies can be distributed even to those who don't own the software. Soon after, a revolutionary animation appeared. Dr. Eric Graham's The Juggler. Its geometric world and mirrored spheres introduced three-dimensional ray-traced animation to the Amiga. 
and became much like the Boing Ball before it, a symbol of the computer and its dominance in the animation field. By this time, Amiga animation was in full swing. Animation standards had been established, letting artists use several different programs to get just the right effect in their work. And software like D-Paint 3 combined 2D animation and paint programs to give artists a single package with more creative power than they ever had before. In animation, more than any other application, choosing the right software package is absolutely vital to your success. Often, you can get similar results from a number of programs, but you'll find major differences in their user interface. And no matter how powerful the software is, if you can't learn to use it, the power it contains is out of your reach. To help find out what software is right for you, let's look at what's available in both two- and three-dimensional animation. Now it's off to Computers R Us to buy software. But how do you decide which one to buy? Well, when you've figured out how much time and money you want to invest, you can move on to the important question. Is it love? Imagine that you had created the animations you saw today. Which one made you gasp? Which program looked like fun? Without a doubt, if one of them inspired you, if the program made you want to dig in and get started, then it's the right one. As in any romance, you need to find a mate that can understand the way you think. For instance, if you draw and sketch, try Disney's Animation Studio. If you think in color and want pixel-by-pixel -pixel control, try D-Paint. If you talk in angles and parameters but can't draw to save your life, Imagine will probably feel right to you. There are a lot of animation packages out there. Visit your software dealer and try a few of them out. Chances are, if you find an animation that you love and a program makes sense, then you've found a match. With an Amiga and some passion, there's very little you can't accomplish.